Hi guys, my name is Stuart and I'm here with you once again with Frontline Foam to build a Lepus. Um, I'm going to walk through the entire building process of the Lepus and show and walk you guys through the ins and outs of how it works to help you guys build your own start to finish and get it working. The Lepus is a great little blaster. It's a design by Jack Rabbit Nerfer, the designer of the Bulwark, so already a reputation there. And uh, the Lepus is quite the power package. Um, it's really small, but it delivers like many or better than many other flywheel blasters. It uses fang revamp motors with worker flywheels, and it uses a dual trigger setup, one for rev and one for fire. Um, and it uses this little N20 motor. This one is a 3000 RPM M20 motor. Um, all this combined makes a very small blaster capable of firing a crazy amount of darts in a very short amount of time. I think we've crunched the numbers already. And basically in less than a second, you can dump an entire mag. It's yeah, <laughs> that's the way it is. And you'll see that at the end when we test fire this thing. It's a crazy little guy for sure. I highly recommend it just for the fun factor alone because it's really fun just unloading and it's just a cloud of darts heading in your opponent's direction. But um, very practical, in my opinion, as a sidearm and uh, or even as a primary, just a fun little blaster. Really great. Um, what I have in front of me is everything you need to build the blaster start to finish, tools aside, obviously. Um, we've got the printed parts, which you can get from Frontline Foam. Um, and we have the hardware that we need to assemble the entire thing, or a hardware kit, that you can also get from Frontline Foam. If you want everything here, you can get a Lepus DIY kit, and boom, shows up at your doorstep, and you can follow along just like this. Um, if you already have a 3D printer, you can just order a hardware kit, print your own parts, and you get a little baggie with all these parts, with all these, uh, with all this hardware, and you can throw it together as well, following along with this video. Um, it's, it's seriously a great little blaster, and honestly, it's not too hard to assemble. It is a decent amount of soldering. We are going to be doing quite a bit of soldering, given that we have two switches and two motors, three motors. That's a bit of a chore, but it's not too bad. In fact, if you follow along exactly as I do, you shouldn't run into any issue at all. But yeah, um, everything here, it's quite a competitive price as well compared to the other flywheel blasters. So if you're looking for a flywheel, bla an electric blaster, a flywheel blaster, um, this is, and you're on a budget, this is definitely something that I would, I, I would highly recommend. Very, very good blaster, high performance, just good bang for buck and for size. Um, I'm a, a disclaimer. I can be pretty disorganized in my thoughts. You'll probably hear me say something important that I would have wished I said now, etc. cetera. Um, but we're just going to kind of wing it here. I'm going to build it start to finish, have you guys follow along. Um, a couple things to keep in mind is our, um, I've, I've been at Frontline Foam for close to two years now, approaching two years, and I have had a significant amount of, of experience building all sorts of these blasters. I've built a good handful of Lepuses already. They're pretty new here at Frontline Foam, but I've already built quite a few. So I've kind of learned the ins and outs and the shortcuts that you can take and the things that make, and little tips and tricks that make things easier. And I'm going to try my best to share those with you. Um, so I really hope that you guys can take my advice and uh, apply it to make your build go smoother. But just because I had this experience doesn't mean that I'm perfect. I'm definitely not a, a, a professional electrician by any means. Um, you may think that my soldering's a little sloppy or something, but all that stuff aside, my goal is to make it work and make it work well and be durable. So yeah, just follow along and uh, I think we will do just fine. Okay. So first, we are going to get these little switches wired up. These little switches are, like I said, pretty small, and they're going to be fitting into a pretty small space uh, in here. You can see where those four holes are, and then there are, f there are two holes on each of these switches. Um, it's going to be pretty compact and tight in there. The wires aren't going to have a ton of room. So something that I like to do that's kind of cheating, but honestly comes in a lot of handy, is I have these snippers, and I like to snip each of these prongs to about half their current length. Now, the reason I do this 
like I said, is to provide more room for the wires to pass through the channel behind the switches. Um, with more room, we're less likely to pinch something important or cause a short, etc. So this is just something I like to do as a precaution, but it, it genuinely just makes things easier. Um, if you did snip them like me, if you have the tools to do it, do it for sure. You don't have to snip these. It'll, it'll fit. It'll be tight, but it'll fit if you don't. So don't worry about it if you don't have snippers just like mine. Um, but I've got these snipped. As, just if you did snip yours, be careful. They are really sharp now. I've pricked my finger a couple, finger a couple times on these, so just be careful. Um, I'm going to be using this vise, which is arguably overkill, to hold these switches down while I solder onto them. Another thing you'll notice is that the switches are not in the middle. The buttons on the switches are not in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to point the buttons to the left, like so. The buttons are pointing to my left, and then I'm going to secure them in this vise um, with about a quarter inch gap between them. I'll, I'm going to secure these down and I'll show you my process, my thought process and reasoning why. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to do that real quick. Okay, so I've got these secured nice and tight. Um, what we're trying to do is we're trying to mimic the spacing on this handle exactly to the spacing on these wires. This is kind of tough to show because it's pretty small, but I'm going to try it anyways. The holes are right here the same place as these kind of bumps on the surface. I really hope you can see that. That's where the holes are on these ridges. So what I want to do is I want to be able to hold this handle piece and I want to be able to look straight at these four holes and see that they line up with each switch. And if they don't, I need to scoot these switches either left or right, make a bigger gap or a smaller gap to get them lined up just right. Basically, they're in the vise exactly as they would be as if they were in the handle. So, with that done, let's get into some soldering. So, we've got these switches secure, and before I continue, I wanted to mention something to you guys real quick. Um, sometime pretty soon, we're going to have an STL file on our website for a spacer. It's going to be a little spacer that you can print that you can slide these switches into and it'll hold them in just the right spot. So you don't need to do any manual adjusting. You just put them in their slots and then you tighten it down and whatever thing you're using to hold it together and it's already spaced correctly. So keep an eye out for that. For now, of course, I have to do this manually. Um, what we're gonna do is I'm going to strip the end. I'm gonna be using red wire for the next bit. I recommend that you guys keep the wire colors the same just so it's easier to follow along. I stripped just a bit, like an eighth of an inch or even less, off the tip of this, and I'm going to tin that, and this wire I am going to connect to this prong. So we have six going from left to right, it's going to be the fourth. And remember, double check that your buttons underneath the switches are pointing to your left when we do this, okay? So I'm going to solder this tip to this fourth prong here, so let's do that. Okay, so we're ready to connect the two. While I was at it, I tinned um, the rest of the prongs that we're going to be using. So for reference, I tinned the first, the second, the fourth, and the fifth. All right, from left to right. Now we're going to connect the wire. Do be careful as you're heating the prongs on the switches. Um, the switches are kind of a softer plastic or however it works. And if you heat them for too long, you can actually melt the prongs deep into the switch, which would be bad and possibly ruin the switch, so do be careful. So, with all that mentioned, I'm going to connect this wire to the fourth prong. And notice something that I'm doing here is when I connect the wire, I'm not coming in from the top. I'm actually connecting the wire to the side of the prong. So that way I can lay the wires flat against the switch and they take up less room in the channel that they'll be occupying later. So boom, we have that wire secured there. Now what I'm gonna do, is I'm going to strip this wire, just like the last one, take off only a bit, and I'm going to tin it and connect it to 
this second prong here. Just like that. So we have these two wires coming straight out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut some more wire off of these long wires that I've been using. By the way, you may not have the exact same amount of wire that I have here in the video. Um, I just grabbed a bunch just in case. But when you guys get your hardware kit from us, we're going to have the correct amount of wire that you need to do the job. So I'm going to judge this wire here. I'm going to judge about the halfway point and snip that. It does not need to be exact. As long as we've got like six or seven inches, we're looking good. Um, and I'm going to strip the tip of this one, tin it. Now this wire is going to connect to this prong, the fifth one from the left, but the only difference from the other two is that it's going to make a pit stop on its way backwards at this prong here, the first one. So what we need to do is I'm holding it exactly where it's going to be soldered, and I'm going to grab it right here and give it a bit of a pinch so I can tell where I'm going to strip it. And I'll show you what I do here, and hopefully you can see. I'm going to give it a pinch there and a pinch there. And as you can see, I've got those two cuts, and then I'm going to just peel that chunk off like so and give it a little bit of a twist, and then we have that junction where the prongs can meet. And as you can see, that lines up there and that one lines up with that first prong. Let me try and get it a little closer just so we're sure we're on the same page. That's going to be connected to the first prong and it's going to come to the fifth. So I'm going to tin this and then throw it all together. Just like how these ones were on the top, this one, both of these are going to be on the bottom. Okay, so we have these switches all soldered together. Um, I'm going to hold this up to you guys just so you can have a good look as to how it should end up. If you need to, just pause the video and take a, you know, take a snapshot of that if you want to make sure you've got it the correct way. And I, I really recommend, I, I highly encourage that you make sure that you've got it right because it's going to be kind of a pain to uh, correct it later. <clears throat> so now that I've got these, I'm actually going to mark each of these wires so I know which is which for later. And I highly recommend that you guys do the same thing. I did this in my bulwark guide video, um, and it's going to apply very similarly here. So here I am holding these switches. The one that has the connection to each switch and bridges the gap, this one over here to the left, I'm going to reach up towards the top and I'm going to put one dot with my Sharpie on it. Then this switch here, or this wire here that comes out of the top switch, I am going to put two dots on it. And lastly, this switch, or geez, this wire that comes out of the bottom switch, I am going to put three dots on it. The reasoning behind this is when we're holding the blaster in our hands and we have the switches right here, this wire is going to go out towards the left, towards the motors, so one. This one is going to go out to the right towards the pusher motor, which is two, and then this one's going to go out towards the back, towards the battery, which is three. So one, two, three. That's how I like to remember it. Even if that didn't make sense, as long as you match these accordingly, like I did, it's going to help you out later. So it's pretty important. Okay, so now let's throw the cage together. Careful, these motors are really magnetic, so always make sure you check them every once in a while to make sure you haven't, like accidentally picked up any of your screws or something like that, especially when we put the flywheels on later because it can actually cause a jam, which can be bad. Um, these motors are going to fit into these two holes on the cage, but just like a lot of other blasters that I do, I'm going to take a file and just be extra sure to take out any excess filament that may still be inside and cause an issue with the motor seating properly. Something I also like to do is just poke out these four holes to make sure that the screws have a clear path to get to the motors later. 
So I've cleaned that out. I'm pretty satisfied with how it's looking. Got some gunk out of there. Every printer is different. You may not even need to do this, by the way. But that's just what we like to do here. Now, as for the orientation of the motors, what I like to do is put them in like so. So the orientation is the foam blast letters are pointing out. And notice that the red dots are opposite each other. That's one of the most important parts is that the red dots are on the same line. Um, the way I remember this is um, when I'm looking down the blaster and I'm looking in the direction that the darts are going to be going, I want there to be a red dot in the back right. So if I look at it like this, I need a red dot in the back right. So just like that. When we do it this way, that's going to make black negative later. At least I'm like 95% sure. I could be wrong. So we'll see how it goes. <clears throat> Now I'm going to flip the cage over, but before I do that, I'm going to use these Mark 8 tab protector prints. Um, and I just use these because these slide over the motors and they distribute the pressure from the motor tabs to the actual um, middle here so the tabs won't get damaged. Because if you just jam it into your table, you're going to bend these and possibly break them, making them almost useless. So I'm just going to use these to protect them as I flip it over. It's kind of funky, but it does the trick for me. And you don't need to do this. It just kind of helps make sure that they don't get too messed up. Now I'm going to take some Loctite, some thread locker. Um, and I'm just going to put an itty bitty drop on each of the four holes. This isn't entirely required, but we definitely recommend that you put a little bit of Loctite on these screws because there's going to be lots of vibrations and they do have a chance to slide out later which will definitely cause some issues. So just four dots. And now I'm going to thread in these teeny, teeny motor screws. Um, these are really small, so be careful not to lose them. They're going to feed into these four holes and they're gonna be pretty hand tight, but not too tight. Because they're so small, they can strip pretty easily. So do be careful and make sure that you're actually threading in straight and really pay attention to what you feel. You'll know they're in there all the way when they start to snug up. As soon as they start to snug up, give it like an extra little bit of a turn, but you shouldn't need to go much more than that. That's basically the rule of thumb. So I'm gonna do the other three here. All right, now we have the four motors nice and secure in there. And those, each of these four screws are nice and tight, but not too tight, nothing stripped, so we're good to go. What we're gonna do now is we're going to throw on our flywheels. This is a piece of cake. You really can't push them on too much. You, you literally just slide them on just like that and you push them on and you'll feel them hit the bottom. And then that's how you know that they're on all the way. Piece of cake. Um, do make sure that your print is nice and clean though by spinning the motors. You should be able to spin them and you shouldn't feel it rubbing on any print. The motors, don't worry, they, they have kind of a bouncy feel because of the way they, the magnets work in them. Don't worry about that, they're supposed to be that way. Um, but yeah, we threw those motors on. And when we look down the, uh, the cage assembly, we can tell that those motors are level. It's actually kind of a strange optical illusion with the way that the slants on the cuts are, but don't worry about it. <laughs> Um, as long as they look straight, you're good to move on. I'm going to go ahead while I'm here and tin each of these four motor tabs. Now we are going to take one of our black, our, our black wire and we're going to point this thing away from us. And we are going to solder the wire onto these back two prongs like uh, like so. <laughs> we want there to be a bend here to make room for, to help it fit later to make room for the print. Um, you'll see why later, but we want there to be a bend like this. Um, so we're going to kind of hold it like this. I'm going to take a marker and I'm going to mark the areas that I'm going to strip the wire. And I'm, yeah, I'm going to strip and then solder here and here. It's going to look like that. 
and uh, we'll carry on from there. All right, here we are. Um, it's a little crooked that way, but that's totally fine. The point is, is that it's out of the way. It's got a nice bend to it, and both of these come straight back, and they're nice and secure. Now, with the cage halfway done and our switches ready, we're going to take this, these two parts here, and we're going to get these thrown together and, and get the wiring finished up here in a minute. We're going to take all three of these wires and we are going to feed them through this little hole here in this in this tan print. All three of them. And then uh, the switches are going to hang out about this far down here. We're going to point those out of the way. And we are going to feed this handle gently into those slots, piece of cake. And now we see where the switches are supposed to go. We're just going to gently push those into their slots. Okay, as you can see, my switches have a tendency to curve or kind of bend out that way. I can actually give them a gentle push inwards and I can see the holes line up properly. Um, I'm actually not going to put the screws in just yet. I'm just going to leave it as is just because I like to do that almost last. Now we have these three wires sticking out the top. Remember, our first wire is going to stay up here. Our two-dot wire is going to come to the back like this. And our three-dot wire is going to come to the back on the other side like that. So this wire is obviously way too long. Hopefully yours isn't this long. So I'm just going to cut this now just to get that shorter and out of the way. There we go. Now what's going to happen is this cage is going to sit right here and these two motors, are, these two black wires are going to feed to the back like the red ones. However, what we need to do is we need to connect this front red wire. Sorry for getting that out of frame. We're going to connect it to these two prongs on the cage. Uh, this is a bit acrobatic for sure. But what I recommend, a little cheat that I like to do is I like to pull this wire, make sure the switches are in place. I just pulled it too hard. There we go. And then I'm going to pull this wire towards the back. And as soon as I get to this angle here, that's where I know I can make my first cut. So I'm going to give that a pinch with my nails to mark it. And I'm going to make my first wire strip here for the first motor tab. There we go. We have our first one done. And with that first one done, we can kind of lay this down. We know where it's going to start, so we know where it's going to finish. We're going to set it right there as if it was connected. And now we know where we need to cut this wire. So I'm going to pinch it right there. Give that a cut. Boom. That seems to line up okay. I'm going to strip, twist, and tin the end of this. And then I'm going to connect all of these. I'm going to solder them together. There we go. Mine ended up being a little long and having this bend in it, but that's fine. There's room for that later. Go ahead and throw a shell screw into each of these two holes. Okay, now with those two screws securing the handle to this lower piece, we're going to feed the wires to the back. Make sure the double dot is on the right and the triple dot is on the left. And then without pinching anything, making sure that the wires don't end up, you know, cut anywhere, we're going to just gently, piece of cake, set the cage into its place. And then we should have a pair of wires here and a pair of wires here, just like that. Now we're going to take two more, sh four more shell screws, and we're going to secure the cage in these two holes and then in these two holes in the front. These two holes up front need to actually be shorter shell screws. So I'm going to cut mine in half and then put them in here. Um, there's a chance that we will be making modifications to the files such that you don't need to. But for the time being, 
Just make sure that your screws are shorter for the front two holes. Okay, we've got the cage bolted down. We were able to put those screws in just fine. Remember these were half length and these were full. Um, it is a little tricky getting an angle on these screws here. You do kind of need to come in crooked and with the motors being so magnetic, they tend to stick to the motor. So just try your best to get your hands in there and get those things secure. Um, yeah, so now we'll move on. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the pusher motor. We are making good progress here. The pusher motor, the shaft is normally a little bit longer than this. What I did just now is I actually snipped it shorter. Um, you could also use a Dremel, but our goal actually is to send these to you guys pre-cut because I know not everybody has, you know, tools on hand to do a modification like that. What we do is we, we make this shorter so that way it fits into this rotator wheel without sticking out the top. Um, that's the goal there. And uh, yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to press this motor into this wheel and we're going to line up the flat edge of this motor with the flat edge of the hole. Lately, these have been really tight fits and maybe that's just our printers or maybe we'll make some modifications to how tight this fit is. So I'm going to be using my vise. Um, whatever you end up having to do, just make sure that you're gentle with these motors. They're not the strongest thing in the world. Um, but make sure you push the thing on, the, the spinner wheel, nice and straight and that you get it on as tight as you can or as far down as you can without causing any serious friction. Um, also be wary of these two little prongs, little tabs sticking out the bottom. Those bend pretty easy and can break, etc. Uh, especially when we solder those, you do got to be quick with them so you don't melt them into the motor. Um, but we'll get to that. For now, our objective is just to squeeze these, squeeze these on. Um, I kind of like to do a little trick where I um, apply pressure to this back plate here, either by tapping it gently with a hammer, using like a screwdriver or something. I'm not sure what I'll do just yet. You'll probably see it for a minute. Um, but I recommend you guys do what you have at your disposal to get this on. Hopefully you can just kind of push it on by hand or give it a few taps. I might be using this vise, but we'll see how it goes and we'll get that on there nice and snug. Okay, so what I ended up doing is I ended up using this file on the table as a safe place to set the bottom of my motor. Oops, that wasn't in frame. I used the file, yeah, like so, just to kind of keep those tabs off the table. And then I gently gave it some taps with the hammer here. Um, like I said, ours are really tight for some reason. Uh, we'll be working on that. But yeah, that's what we want. Ours isn't perfectly straight, but that's okay. Um... By the way, guys, if you don't have a 3,000 RPM motor, if yours is like 600 RPM, it pro yours probably won't spin as easily as mine does, and that's okay. Yours is going to be a little bit stiffer. That's just because of how the gears are, I think. Now, we're going to take another shell screw, and we are going to snip this one in half, just like the others. And this is going to secure the pusher to the pusher wheel. It's going to feed through the pusher into the pusher wheel, and secure it down loosely, of course, so it can still spin. However, I've noticed that this hole is a little too tight, um, so what I like to do is I like to drill it out to a 1 8 diameter. I do that so that way there's plenty of room for this screw to spin inside, so that way there's no chance of it catching somehow. Now, I'm going to thread it into the bottom, the, uh, the rotator here. Okay, we got it on, and I noticed that I didn't tighten it all the way. I still want to be able to spin this. In fact, that's maybe a little too tight. I'm just going to loosen that ever so slightly more. Because, uh, yeah, that's what we want. We want to be able to just flip this around like crazy. It needs to be able to spin if you're going to have really high RPM. Um, so there we are. We've got this set up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to buckle this down. I'm going to tin the two tabs on this pusher motor and prepare it for soldering. Um, right, so I just finished tinning these two tabs. Do be careful, don't melt them. Um, they do, this plastic does melt pretty easy. I just tinned these two tabs. Now what I'm gonna do 
is I'm going to take these two motors on the right side of the, motors, geez. I'm going to take these two wires on the right side of the blaster and I'm going to pull them to about here, like a quarter inch to these, these holes. And I'm going to snip these two wires right there. Boom. Just like that. And I'm going to strip just a little bit off of the end of each of these wires and tin those two spots. Now with everything tinned, we are going to connect these two wires to these two prongs on the pusher motor. Now, um, fortunately, it doesn't matter which one's which. You just got to connect them. Just be careful. Make sure they're a, they're a good connection, that each side melts and it bonds together, and that um, the angle we're going for here is an angle like this. We want them to kind of poke out the side. We don't want to come in like this or like this. We just want to come directly out the side, so that way the wires can fit through this gap easier later. So I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. Okay, there we have it. They both come out the side, and notice how I can kind of pinch it here. They kind of both have an angle like that, going inwards. Now, we can just bring this around. And we can push it gently into its hole and tuck those wires into this groove and gently just push the wire down, uh, the motor down. I'm mixing the word wire and motor for some reason, like every time. Okay, so it looks like our black wire was a little too long because it's kind of got to do a swirl to stay in place, but that's okay because it's not going to get in the way of anything. And we've got the motor basically to the bottom. Um, there isn't anything that secures this motor, which is okay. We just want to make sure that it sits about, you know, that deep in its groove. There we are. Now what we're going to do is we're going to bring these two wires back to connect to the battery. Um, what we've been doing lately, and this may change, this is subject to change, but we've been connecting these to a connector like this. And we've been salvaging, whoa, we've been salvaging these connectors um, from little switches now, we might actually send you guys just the connector housing. Something may change, but for right now, I'm just going to show you how it works now. Um, I'm going to cut these wires. Uh, the distance doesn't really matter. If you want a really long battery cord, then go for it. But I'm going to cut them about right here. I'm going to pull them to this corner, and that's where I'm going to snip them both. I'm going to strip and tin these. And then I'm going to strip and tin these guys, and I'm going, connect, going to connect them and cover them with heat shrink. It's going to be black to black and red to red. So, yeah, let's knock that out. Okay, I've got them joined, black to black and red to red. Before I slide the heat shrink on, I'm going to just be extra sure that I have everything wired correctly. I'm going to plug in our little motor. I'm going to make sure I don't short it here. And I'm going to tap the bottom switch. Looking good. I'm going to make sure that these are spinning the right direction. Just like that, perfect. And now if I tap the bottom switch and then the top switch, it should spin all the motors. Looking good. Okay, cool. So that means that all of our wiring was correct. And if you guys followed along, it looks like you guys should be in the green too. Um, if for some reason yours isn't working, I, it's it's tough, but I, I recommend that you go back and check and make sure make sure everything's connected and make sure that you were able to follow along correctly. Now I've got the heat shrink here. I'm just gonna shrink that down. Get those joints covered so we don't risk any shortage. There we go. And there's our battery wire. Fits right there. And we are getting really close now. Really close. To wrap up the rest of this build, I'm gonna do something real quick. I'm gonna take this top cover and I'm gonna drill out this back hole to 964. Just super quick like that. The reason being, 
I like it when this rear thumb screw uh, fits smoothly like that. I don't like that to thread that in myself. I just like that to be loose. Um, but that's kind of personal preference, or, or in other words, what we do here. Um, what's going to happen is this guy is going to feed the two prongs up front into those grooves and then close over everything just like that. Um, however, our thumb screw is actually too long. It's going to feed into the into the uh, nut here that we have embedded into the print. But the trouble is, is it being so long, it actually bottoms out against that plastic, which is okay, but we're just going to actually take a long screw. You can do it by hand, but I'm going to just grab a long one. Feed that in there. And I'm just going to continue it all the way through so that way it busts through that plastic. That plastic doesn't really serve any purpose and we'll probably modify the file such that you don't need to do this. There we go, we've broken through, I'm going to back that out. So we got that screw to puncture through this side just to give it room for when we thread it later, which is great. And now what we're going to do is throw this cap on push it into those two holes and close it up back here. And then we're gonna put our thumb screw in here. It's gonna start easy and then it's gonna get pretty tight as it comes into that tan plastic on the other side. There we go, nice and snug, all closed up. And we're basically done, but not quite. There's one more step. We're gonna take these four itty bitty screws and we're going to now secure these switches. We could have done it earlier, I just procrastinated it. These screws are obviously really small, so do be gentle in whatever you do with them. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to gently push these motors into place, so that way I can see the light coming through each of the holes. And when I have it lined up, I'm going to hold it in place as best as I can with my finger, and then proceed to put that screw in there. Now it doesn't matter which side you come through. Um, that's really up to you. I guess I'm just doing the left just because. And my motor, or my motors, my switches are having a tendency to kind of bend in their own direction. I'm just kind of bending them back to where I want them to be. That's okay. We made sure to give them, give the wires room accordingly earlier, so we know that things are going to be okay. We're going to do the bottom one now. All right, so we've got the Lepus all done, all bolted together. Everything's working. I'm going to show you guys how to throw the battery in, and then we're going to dump a magazine through it and show you guys it firing. We just unscrew that and pop that off. We gently plug this in. The plug only goes one way. By the way, um, these batteries are available on our website. They're good little batteries. I like their size. They don't have the longest life, but they definitely have enough to get you through a few games. So as for tucking the wires, the general rule of thumb is just, just be gentle, careful not to force it too much. But do remember that the wires, they, they can take a little bit. They can be tucked into nooks and crannies. Just be careful not to pinch them too strongly. I kind of like to fold mine down the front here. Uh, make sure they're not in the way of the pusher or the flywheels. You could feed the wires up here. It's totally up to you. Whatever way you think is best according to the length of your plug that you left. Going to slip the cover on, making sure that those teeth are in the front and making sure that I don't pinch any cords. And then I'm going to tighten down the back here. And there's the battery in there. Now we've got a 15 round worker magazine full of Gen 3 worker darts. Um, we've toyed around with different darts and uh, we found that all darts work. The only concern that we've had is if you are using Adventure Force darts, these guys here, just make sure that yours are in good condition. If the back is, if they're pretty worn out, they might load crooked, which can lead to some jamming, not jamming, but some, uh, some bad feed. So you won't be able to get the whole magazine out in one go. Um, so yeah, let's chuck this in here, and let's watch the magazine of darts disappear. That genuinely, I, of course I wasn't holding it like a rifle, but that genuinely did push my hand back a little bit, if you saw. 
I'm actually curious. I'm probably going to go back later and look at this footage to see how many frames it took to dump that whole magazine and determine. Yeah, anyways, yeah, as you can see, really crazy. Um, disadvantage of using worker darts is, as you can see, you do lose the heads every once in a while. We found this to be more rare than common lately. We've seen some good worker darts, but that one looks like it was just part of the bad batch. But yeah, there you have it. The Lepus, a way killer blaster for sure. Highly recommend it. Like I said before, um, go get one. It's a great price compared to a lot of other electric blasters out there. And you're going to have so much fun with it. Thanks for watching, guys. Really hope this video helped. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.